How many of you guys were listening earlier? Anybody? Nobody here? You were here? Oh, you talking like this? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, just earlier this afternoon. Okay, so I can, I can sound original if I repeat myself. I like that. Um, right, so we have a pest-centric mentality, don't we? Towards biodiversity, towards insects. We see a pest, we see a problem, and we want to stamp it out. But for every one of those pests that we see out there, there's actually 1,700 species of insects that are helping us, that we need in our systems, that we can't live without, quite frankly. And so when we make a management decision to kill the insects, you're not just killing your pests, you're killing everything else that's out there, right? Everybody come on in here, please. Come on in, if you haven't, yeah. Um, what I did is I did 40 sweeps in this pasture. Right? It's just a normal, you know, I mean, it's a fairly diverse system, but there's, a, you know, it's, this is cropland, right? This is a managed system. So what did we find? Everybody, get your butts in here. Come on. So what I want to show you is just the diversity of critters that we have out here. Look at all of the stuff that's going to start flying out. What's that? That's a longhorn grasshopper right there. That's a Tetagonia day, okay? That's an important herbivore out there. It's not a normal grasshopper that everybody seems to hate. That's, a, that's, a, that's part of the system, right? There's a female one. It's got a long ovipositor that it uses to stab its eggs into plant uh, stems. Okay, what else do we have in here? Grasshoppers. So what's the difference between that longhorn grasshopper and... A normal grasshopper? Yeah, if there is such a thing as a normal. Right. So there is no normal grasshopper. Grasshoppers are actually a diverse community, even in North Dakota. So, and what we often forget is that grasshopper... So we think, we think, oh yes, you know, I mean, the bison and the large ruminants were so important in shaping these plant communities, the grasslands and the prairies. Guess what? Grasshoppers were a force of nature, right? I mean, we, they were so influential on what species of grasses were out there. And so we often, so we often, you know, want to kill the grasshopper, you know, that's causing us a pest, but we forget that that one grasshopper pest species is only one of a few dozen species that we have out here that aren't hurting anything that we need, okay? What else do we have? Let's see, let's see what else is out here. Okay, this is another, uh, so this is a type of um, damsel bug. This is, um, this is a predator. And what it does is it's got a piercing, sucking mouth part, and it sucks the juices of other insects. These guys are actually most active at night. We, we went out, we did nocturnal sampling where we pinned some insects, especially aphids out there, in the and then we went out in the middle of the night to see who was eating them. And the, uh, the nabbits really woke up in the middle of the night and they were sucking the juices right out of there. It's really cool. All right, what else do we got? What else do we got? Okay, little, oh, okay. You guys are gonna have to get close for these. Little flies, right? Little flies, they're jumping out. What you're starting to see is a lot of little black critters. That are out that are starting to fly around. There's a little beetle. Who the hell knows what that is? I don't even know what family it is. Spiders. Look at that. Whoa, did you see them? Sit, lay down a line of silk and like just runs off. Spiders are all predators. So important, right? Spiders are really important parts of the system. Um, but entomologists are just starting to realize now that um, spiders aren't just herbivorous. When you see a spider that spins a nice, big, beautiful web, what they are is they're filter feeders. They're casting a net. And what they catch is a bunch of fungal spores and pollen grains and stuff. And every night they eat their webs. And that's how they get a lot of their nutrition. So they don't just eat like the grasshoppers that jump in there. They're eating all kinds of things. Why do we need plants like these in our system? Why do we need grasses in our system and our conservation mixes? Because this pollen becomes a real driver of the diversity that you end up seeing out there. Let's see what else we've got. Another amazing stuff. This is a little seed bug. So this one e uses its sucking mouth parts to suck the juices out of seeds. Okay. All right, you guys get over here. Come on, come on, get in here. You've never seen this stuff before. It's so cool. 
Get closer and act amazed. Oh, look at her. This is actually a male, huh? So it's got these big palps that it uses for, uh, you know, that's how it transfers the sperm to the female. So whenever you look at a spider and it's got those big palps, you know, those big like uh, balls on the front of its, uh, on its, uh, its pinchers, those are actually uh, sperm transfer organs. So that's a male. Okay, look at all this. Oh, look at all these little black, these are parasitoid wasps that we're seeing there. This is a little dipterin, so a little fly. Parasitoid wasps like this are the most diverse group of animals on planet Earth. Every, every insect has a parasitoid wasp that stings only it. So that's why these insects become so diversified, right? Is because these wasps end up, you know, if they've got a specialist wasp that stings only it, I mean, good Lord, for every species, uh, for the millions of species of insects that we have, there's an equal number. Oh, isn't that a beauty? Oh, oh, she's trying to jump off. Oh, no, you don't. I'm an entomologist. I'm smarter than you are. This is a crab spider. Look at that. Ooh, oh, you got me. They lay on the side of flowers, waiting for something to fly in and get some nectar or pollen, and then they scoop around and they grab them and they suck the blood right out of them. Pretty cool, huh? Here's another nabid bug, a very good predator, especially, this is a Nabis America ferris. This is a very good predator of soybean aphids and other aphid species. Let's see. Tons of these wasps. Look at all the diversity, you guys. Oh, this one's a cool one. This is a thorn mimic. This is a membras. Oh, come on. Oh, no, you don't. So, this is a membracid and it's uh, herbivorous. It feeds on the juices of plants. What is it trying to mimic? Oh, did you see it? A thorn, right? So it just stays perfectly still and nothing tries to get at it because it just thinks it's part of the plant. Biomimicry is so important in the insect world, right? And you see just amazing cases of intricacies in biomimicry. Look at all of this stuff, you guys. Look at all of this stuff, all of these little itty bitty critter critters. Each of them is a different species that when you see them under the scope, you couldn't invent in Hollywood, okay? Oh, look at these ants, huh? Oh, you got him! Nice kid. Oh, oh, you son of a gun. Oh, he did, yeah, yeah. He's, oh, no, he left now. Look at all of these amazing creatures, huh? Ants. If you do not have ants in your system, you are missing out. Quickest way to kill off all your ants is tilling. What you want ants for is they, they're ecosystem engineers. They shape everything else in your system. They are important predators. They eat weed seeds. They, they, some of the most healthy places in a pasture are the ant mounds because they cast out all of the food that they're done eating. And that becomes a really important resource for the plant community. So huge, huge, huge benefits. If you have ants in your system, pat yourself on the back. You've done a good job. So I get up in the morning and I can go out into my prairie or into one of my fields. Look at the diversity that's out there. I can see things that I've never seen before. I've been studying insects for 20 years and I see things that I've never seen before on a daily basis. There's such a sense of discovery. Look at this little moth, you know? It's a little grass moth. Who knows what it's doing out there? But then you find your pest and you spray. And what are you killing? You're killing all of this diversity. You're not just killing a pest. You're killing so much life that your system needs to su survive. These insects are the reason why this pasture is healthy and can support sheep. So there you have it in a nutshell. That's kind of the message that I want you to, want you to have. Have a sense of wonder of the natural world. Because it's really spectacular. <laughs> it's really spectacular. Like a kid in a candy store. I am every day, man. It's awesome. It's awesome. Name us some pests. Well, well it all depends on your perspective, doesn't it? <laughs> right. 
Uh-huh. What is a pest? What is a pest? It's a human construct, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Right. So like they were talking about the, uh, the butterfly or the moths, the uh, corn borer type moths. Mm -hmm. those other. So last night you talked about using BT, um, just the, the uh, liquid BT and spraying the silks. You didn't talk about that, but for killing those. Corn yeah, you borers. can use that. Mm -hmm. Or using it on the uh, <laughs> broccoli or cauliflower. Uh, is mm -hmm. that okay? I would rather design a system that doesn't need it. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? No-till. Getting plant diversity out there. Covering the soil. You know, giving that soil armor, that biological entity armor. And that, when you start doing those things, have you seen all of the butterflies we have flying all over our crucifers? Mm -hmm. Have you ever looked for any caterpillars on those plants? There's not many on our garden right now. We don't use any pesticides. Because something eats the caterpillar. We planted flowers in between each plant. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. When you're starting your garden plants in the spring, plant a few flats of marigolds and, and salvia and zinnias and things like that. Plant them alongside. Do you have pictures of how you do it in your space on your Facebook or website? Yeah, yeah. So go to Blue Dasher Farm web, or Blue da or Facebook site, and then our blogs have all of our mistakes and successes uh, in gruesome detail sometimes. So even in corn. Yeah. You got 30 inch rows. You want to know why we plant our corn on 30 inch rows? Because it's the width of a horse's ass. <laughs> that is why we plant on 30 inch rows still to this day. <laughs> Fill it up. Plant something between those rows. I mean the guys in Iowa even, they're planting clovers and buckwheat and vetches in between their corn rows and they don't have to put any insecticides down and they're feeding, they're reducing their fertilizer costs while they're doing it. It just makes sense, right? It just makes sense. So lots of opportunities there, guys. But what we need is people that are brave enough to step up and do it, you know? I mean, we can all talk about it all day long. But I mean, the people in this audience and that came to that barn to listen to it, talk about bugs, I mean, everybody, you should be talking about what you're doing and, and we need to be making you guys the heroes that you are. You know, it's not easy. Yeah, that's, that helps a lot too. That helps a lot too. I get insecticides, you know, that's a chemical and yeah. nobody likes chemicals. Well, nobody likes mm. bugs. Well, mm. almost nobody. Sure, but, go ahead. Um, what I was getting at is what about herbic herbicides? You know, there's a big lawsuit against Monsanto now for Roundup. Mm -hmm. And there's Roundup Ready soybeans and Roundup Ready. What about the whole uh, herbicide? So, uh, you know, I think uh, what's killing the bees? Some of it may be insecticides, but a lot of it is fungicides. Just because something says on the bottle that it's for weeds doesn't mean that it only kills weeds. Um, we found that at one eighth of the label rate, uh, 2,4-D kills 99% of the lady beetle population. At one eighth of the label rate. And you know what? It wasn't even the herbicide that was killing them. It was the, the inactive ingredients that are put with the herbicide to make it work that is, are completely unregulated, all right? It's, we're living in a crazy time right now. And I'm not saying, oh, everybody's gotta be organic. And I'm not saying, oh, if you use pesticides then you'd belong in hell. What I'm saying <coughs> is that you need to respect these things. And you need to design a system where you just don't need them. Maybe it's from a business perspective, maybe it's from some, some other perspective, but get the system in place where you don't have pests to begin with. And then you don't have to spend the money on the junk. So, um, we're a little, so right now the only, the only agrochemical that we use on Blue Dasher is herbicides. I use a, a quarter rate, half rate of Roundup to control the perennial grasses that we seed a warm season uh, cash crop into. Um, so we just push down the grasses with the herbicide. 
I want to eliminate that because that's really my only input cost at this point. So I want to get that out of there. What we're doing is we're going to graze the crop with sheep and then I'm going to use a wicking bar to use uh, to wipe the herbicide on instead of spraying all that product out there. Uses about one eighth to one twelfth the herbicide and just as effective. What about vinegar? Yeah, vinegar. Yeah, I mean sometimes I think I've heard uh, thistles that, it, that people use vinegar on thistles a lot, and sometimes they're happy with it, and sometimes they're not. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I don't know that any study has ever been done on it. Does it have an effect on the biology of the system? Probably. Is it softer or heavier than an herbicide? I don't know. Not sure. What do you do with creeping jenny? In a, <coughs> you know, like lawns and stuff like, like that. Hmm. I like. Is that the same as creeping Charlie? Uh, Probably bindweed. 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 Yeah. Why do we like grass so much? I don't. My, so my, we have a, so I stopped spraying my grass, my lawn, the, like when we took over. My, whoever owned the house before we moved to Blue Dasher loved lawn. And uh, so we stopped spraying it uh, and stopped maintaining everything. We've got so many dandelions and so many clover. And my daughter was on the mower and uh, she's mowing out there. And uh, one of my friends, he's uh, Brett 80. He's one of the biggest beekeepers in the world. He has 80,000 beehives or something like this. 80,000 and he he stopped by he like yells at Gabby he's like hey hey all of this stuff down here that's clover you don't mow that and so I looked out at the lawn later I'm like Gabby did you mow the lawn and she's like Brett told me not to mow the clover for the bees so I was like oh all right well that makes a lot of sense then change our thought right we need to change what's between our ears <laughs>